Between the coasts of Southern California and the vast Mojave Desert stands Guardians. And these Guardians come in the form of mountains. These mountains are known as the Transverse Ranges, and they are some of the most beautiful and breathtaking scenery in all of Southern California. They are a relatively thin range of mountains, but as you can see, they do a fairly good job of splitting the Mojave and the Chaparral Biomes commonly found on the coast. As you can see, to the east of this line is pretty clearly the Mojave, and to the west of it, the Chaparral Biomes, closer to the coast. These ranges are very, very significant when it comes to the water that LA receives, as well as the climate it allows for the Mojave Desert to exist. They are a very, very amazing range with a lot of cool ecological and geological features. And speaking of geology, let's go over that right now. So many SoCal natives are aware of the San Andreas Fault, which spans down a good chunk of all of California. But when it gets to Southern California in particular, it takes a very sharp turn to the southeast. The tensional forces that this creates as the fault tries to compensate for the fact that it is going at such an extreme angle result in compression of the crust and therefore mountain building. So this can either happen from two continental crusts colliding, pushing up mountains up, or the process of fault block mountains forming, which is essentially two plates are colliding. They're having a hard time slipping past each other at a transitional zone where two plates are sliding past each other. And so the tensional forces create these blocks of crust which get forced up therefore forming mountains called fault block mountains. Because of the extreme tectonic forces in play that result in these mountains formations, they are quite steep, very tall in some regard, and they're quite thin, but that does not stop them from blocking a significant amount of rain from reaching their other side, which results in the Mojave Desert's formation. So as you can see here from this rain total map, there is not much rain that falls on the coastal side of Southern California, but there's virtually no rain that falls to the east of the Transverse Range Mountains. But just this slight difference in rainfall turns this into this. So this is formed from something called a rain shadow effect. So as storms from the Pacific come to the western parts of these mountains on the western side, they dump all of their moisture as the clouds get compressed and get forced into more colder air as they rise up the mountain slopes. And this essentially is like wringing out a bath towel. It wrings out a lot of the moisture from these storms, so by the time they make it over to the Mojave, there's virtually no moisture left, which leads to a significant difference in the amount of rainfall. Another interesting part of this range is that the rock type that makes up the foundation of the different mountains widely differs depending on the part of the range you're in. So these ranges right here, the San Gabriels, which I'm showing on screen right now, are made of largely metamorphic rock. And this range right here, the San Jacinto range, is largely made up of intrusive igneous rock. Now, the way that this intrusive igneous rock most likely got here is from volcanism produced from the subduction of an ancient tectonic plate known as the Monterey Plate, which subducted millions of years ago under the North American Plate, and probably gave rise to a lot of igneous intrusion in the area, which therefore made up the bedrock of some of these mountain ranges. But enough about the geology, let's discuss some of the interesting animals that you can find in the ranges. I'm going to list off a couple of my favorites right now. So here we have the California king snake. Love these little guys. They're not really dangerous at all. They're not venomous at all. They're just really cool. Right here is a desert iguana. Yes, we do have iguanas in California, and yes, they are very pale looking. Also, the mighty California condor. These things are huge. But my favorite bird in California has to be the red-tailed hawk. These things look so awesome. Here we have a roadrunner. Love these guys, they are just bursting with personality. We also have coyotes everywhere here. You'll see them just running around in neighborhoods sometimes. 
We also have the very elusive bobcat. They are really cool looking. I've seen a couple of these on hikes. Luckily, I haven't seen these on hikes. This is a mountain lion. These things can be huge and super buff. Of course, these mountains are also home to several species of flower, conifers, really cool pine trees, oaks, shrubs like manzanita and scrub oak. I could go on and on. These mountains are chock full of some really interesting flora. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the native peoples that inhabited the region, specifically the Tatabiyam, the Kitanimak, the Serrano, the Tongva, and the Kawiya. The Tatavayam were primarily gatherers. The Serrano were primarily hunters, but did some gathering in the region from some of the local wild edibles. The Tongva were one of the most well-connected tribes in the region since they did have access to the ocean which allowed them to fish, hunt, they were also gatherers, and they participated in trading quite a lot. The Kitanimuk lived in the Tehapachi range and were also primarily gatherers. The Kawiya lived sort of near the San Jacinto range and were also primarily gatherers, but were also known for their expert basket weaving. So a really terrible tragedy that happened during the time was not only infectious diseases which ravaged a large majority of the native population, but in the mid-1800s, new settlers to California, specifically European settlers, and a small part of the U.S. government in the area took part in a mass genocide of the Native American peoples in the region, killing thousands of them and small land disputes and simply due to essentially racism which is absolutely horrific originally the europeans uh, who first came over here were spanish and they were trying to convert the native populations to christianities through the missions like this mission here which is mission san juan capistrano later on european settlers in the region started taking part in ranching in the region they also did some mining. This is a photo of a borate mine that is in the transverse range. There was also a great deal of farming in the region, which still does continue today near the city of Indio and Palm Springs, uh, right behind San Jacinto. Although access to water for irrigation is starting to really hamper the region. And the remainder of the region is large urban sprawl on one side, like here in LA, and not so large sprawl on the Mojave side, like in Victorville. Now the reason why settlement patterns differ so much is because near the coast you have a lot more temperate of a climate because of the cold Pacific Ocean, which plays a moderating effect, keeping the temperatures not too cold but not too hot. Once you get on the other side of the transverse ranges, this moderating effect of the ocean is no longer there, so it can get a lot hotter and a lot colder and also a lot drier, so it is just less nice of a place to live. Both regions do tend to avoid pretty nasty storms though, and that's because of the large high pressure system that almost constantly sits right above the North Pacific, right near the Southern California coast. Because of this high pressure, storms tend to like to go either above or below Southern California, but never tend to really hit them directly. Now, as always, we get to my favorite part of these videos, the hiking. The hiking in the transverse ranges is absolutely fantastic. It is peak SoCal hiking. You get fantastic waterfalls, huge conifer forests, really nice chaparral biomes, really cool lakes and ponds and creeks and even rivers. It is a really dynamic place to hike. Right here I'm hiking in the Pinos Ranges. Don't say that too fast, don't say it too slow. And right here is the San Gabriel Ranges with Mount Baldy, my personal favorite high point of the entire region. This right here is a really nice overlook off the PCT in the San Jacinto Mountains. Some really good views here, that's Pyramid Peak right there and you get some Really nice views pointed towards San Jacinto, which John Muir said was one of the best views he's ever seen in his life from the top. Here is some other stunning views of Mount Baldy from the north side. Uh, it tends to have snow on its high peaks very, very into the summer, 
Same with San Gorgonia, which is even higher than Mount Baldy. And here is the Devil's Backbone Trail, one of the most iconic trails in LA. From right here, this is one of those magnificent high points you can see off of the side of San Jacinto. Right here is San Jacinto from San Gorgonio, so that just shows you how tall San Gorgonio is, just looking down on San Jacinto with how tall it is. And uh, it just looks like the moon up there if you get high enough on San Gorgonio because it is into the tundra zone. And right here is just a really nice waterfall I found with a little heart cut out next to it. So uh, that's for all of you guys. And uh, this is the Silver Lake Reservoir. This is a, another really nice hike right outside of Lake Arrowhead. Really like this one. And uh, right here is just some stunning views that you can see in the San Gabriel Ranges as you're just doing some general hiking in the region. There's also some great areas to see some oak and sycamore change color for those fall colors. Uh, really, really fantastic area to hike. And if you're lucky, you'll catch a super beautiful sunset like this. As always, a big thank you to everybody for watching and a little reminder to get out and hike. I really do hope that you check out the Transverse Ranges next time you visit the SoCal area for Disneyland or if you're a SoCal native, really do check out these mountains, especially if you haven't gotten up in there before. So many beautiful hikes and in some places you'll think that you're in like the Rockies or somewhere more exotic than that even because these ranges do have a very wide range. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.